Hey, what's up folks? This is GK. I know you have been asking me more about the DevOps responsibilities, what you have to do when you join as a DevOps engineer in a company. So I'm going to go over some of the high level responsibilities and in the future videos, we can dive deep into each specific area and then we can look into the tasks that you might do in each area. Now, the responsibilities will depend on three factors, the type of the company, whether it is a startup or an enterprise and the maturity of the company, whether the company is still starting fresh in the DevOps journey or they're already matured and then based on that, the expectation from the engineer will change. And at what level you are hired as a DevOps engineer, whether you're going to be hired as a, a distinguished member technical staff, meaning the person who has more than 12 years, 12 years of experience, or you are hired as a junior level DevOps engineer to do certain tasks uh, in that organization. So now keeping these three things in the mind, we'll cover each topic and I'll explain you some of the real time scenarios that are commonly used in, in each section based on my experience. All right, so the first one is identifying DevOps tools for organization. And this is for any type of the company, whether it is a startup or enterprise, but the maturity of the company is low, meaning they are starting new into this journey. And this is applicable for a person who is more experienced uh, in DevOps meaning the person who has more experience coming into that company. So even during the interview, they will ask you, have you worked on Ansible or Puppet? You know, have you worked on different tools? And what is your suggestion uh, for this organization? And we are going through, you know, this transformation. Uh, could you please explain how you would use Ansible in this setup or what will you suggest for us? And so the expectation from the DevOps engineer here for this responsibility is to suggest the best DevOps tools, either you're going to suggest them to use, you know, GitLab CI or uh, GitHub Actions or Ansible or Puppet or Terraform, or maybe they are still choosing the cloud service provider. So you might even suggest them to use AWS or GCP. So they are starting from scratch and they will expect you to help them out to choose the best tool uh, for their organization. And there might be many factors uh, as they are, they are having the current setup in the on-premise and then you know they'll slowly go into cloud so based on that you have to suggest them the tools so like i've said uh, this is for experienced person in devops who has enough experience in using the tools before so the next one is provision configure and scale devops tools for organization again company has low maturity and they are starting from scratch now the expectation from the devops engineer is to set up highly scalable let's say jenkins environment so how are you going to set up Jenkins in a Kubernetes cluster and make sure that it can be scaled across different teams? Now, for example, when you join an enterprise, you will have different business units. You will have you know, thousands of applications and lots of teams. So now for that organization, let's say you are part of a team or a unit which is responsible to set up and configure all these tools which will be used across the organization. Then you are supposed to make sure that the Jenkins you are going to set up is scalable or you know the Jira you're going to set up is scalable or the artifactory. So again, this is for a person who has more experience in DevOps and in during the interviews, they will ask you, how would you set up a scalable Jenkins or um, you know, a scalable a Terraform, you know, if you're using an open source. But of course, if you are using a SaaS based tools or you know, a cloud base, for example, in the case of Jenkins, where you do not have any control of setting up on your infrastructure, then it is okay. But the general expectation here is that you have to provision, configure, and maintain the infrastructure for the whole organization. And this is the most common tasks that a DevOps engineer right from a junior level to the senior pro would be doing. Like for example, the way it, it goes is, let's say in an enterprise, there are a lot of applications and you are responsible for five or six applications of a business unit, then you are supposed to design a strategy or a, a design a branching strategy for them to set up the CI process. Now, as an example, whenever a developer would commit the code, and as you have multiple releases, whether you're going to create a release branch for each release, or some companies follow a trunk based strategy. So based on the company and based on where you're going, you would define the strategy for the branching as most of the developers might not be aware of how this will all work and how you would integrate between Git and your Jenkins CI. 
and how you would build the code automatically and whether you're going to pull the code or whether you're going to push the code from git so these are the things that you would see in, as part of your ci process and uh, this is the expectation from the devops engineer now the unit testing automation is another common task or responsibility from a devops engineer perspective so obviously the unit tests are written by developers not the devops engineers but what happens is you have to make sure that you set up this pipeline or you set up this ci process where if a unit coverage is less than let's say 60% or 50% based on what you have set up in your sonar cube or if there is any other tool that you're using so you would look into the coverage of the unit tests and execute the unit tests and if a unit test fail uh, if a unit test fails then you would send an email to the developer or the person who has committed the code or uh, the merge has happened or the person who has merged the code and then you would fail the build or build the quality gates to make sure that only the quality code is going forward in the pipeline and this is another common task as part of the ci process now as a devops engineer we have discussed this in my previous videos you also should be aware of at least one cloud platform uh, aws or azure or gcp now when you join a company you are expected to automate certain governance tasks in the cloud like as an example if uh, if a developer is provisioning an ec2 instance or if a developer is provisioning some services in cloud you have to maintain the governance of the cloud probably and mostly this is done by the cloud enablement team and you will be part of such teams and there you will automate these lambda functions to terminate the instance if they are not following certain guidelines that are defined for that company so here the expectation is that you have to have sound automation skills like you know you should do, you should be knowing how to write the python code to terminate this instance or you should be knowing certain services in the cloud like lambda functions or azure functions or you know google cloud functions and then you know use them to maintain the cloud platform or the governance of the cloud platform and this devops engineer uh, can be hired as part of the cloud team cloud enablement team or you can be part of a security team in a startup or it can be any team that is making sure that the cloud is secure when i talk about immutable deployment environment i have discussed about what is immutability and examples of terraform and all those things in past in my previous videos but here your tasks would be to write the terraform scripts or to use the cloud formation templates like for example if a company is using aws and they want to mostly use aws and they want to use only cloud formation then you would be writing the cloud formation templates you should know how to write the cloud formation templates uh, how the nested stacks will work and then how to invoke the scripts through the cloud formation templates um, or how would you productize those cloud formation templates in a service catalog service catalog is another service from aws most of the time most of the companies will not use it but i have seen some companies use that to productize these cloud formation templates and give them as a products for their uh, developers who are not aware of anything in cloud basically they will click on the product and they will provision the service in cloud i know this is a lot to consume for you at this point of time but if you want to know more about the service catalog service in aws please follow the documentation i'm going to leave the link in the description but basically in this task you should be well aware of how to write the terraform scripts or how to write the cloud formation based on the company you are joining and mostly you should be at least aware of how to write the terraform and be very good with the terraform automation and uh, terraform uh, interview questions so this is one expectation from you or one responsibility from you as a devops engineer and this might be again from junior devops engineer to a senior devops engineer so automating deployment is one common task that i have seen previously asked like for example again they will ask you about how to use ansible or how to use helm charts or argo it depends on the infrastructure or depends on where they are trying to deploy but at least uh, learn ansible and you know the expectation here is that you have to write the ansible playbooks um, or the helm charts you know or argo cd any of those stuff that will be useful for you to automate the deployment so automation is the key in all these devops tasks and that's why knowing a python programming language or shell will be very useful now if your company is trying to figure out what are the right monitoring tools 
that are needed as part of monitoring the cloud workloads or monitoring the on-premise workloads. But mostly as a DevOps engineer, they would expect you to suggest them the right monitoring tools if you are a senior pro in that company and if you are hired as a senior pro, uh, then they will ask you, you know, what are the monitoring tools that you have worked in past, whether you can say them about the open source tools or if you have very good experience with the SaaS based monitoring tools like New Relic or if you have worked on some other platforms like Prisma, you know, all these tools will help you or the experience on working these tools will help you to get into that role. And without having experience in the monitoring tools, it would be tough for them to hire a very senior DevOps engineer person. For a junior person, it is okay because junior person has a different task in the terms of monitoring. As a junior engineer, the responsibility of a DevOps engineer is to maintain the monitoring tools. Um, for example, let's say your company has set up an open source monitoring tool, then your expectation is to maintain that monitoring tools environment or infrastructure. But these days, most of the companies are also trying to prefer the SaaS based monitoring tools like Datadog or, uh, or a New Relic or AppDynamics and there are very good SaaS based monitoring tools. So you would have to create the monitoring alerts for your application and then show the reports for that application, whether you are supporting for a, an application or for an organization and then make sure that you maintain these and then have the proper alerts from the application performance monitoring to the infrastructure monitoring. Now, if you have a question like, these are some of the tasks that you would see in a system admin as well. And mostly, as we all know, the system admin role is slowly maturing into a DevOps engineer role. So you have to be ready to maintain the application or maintain all this stuff or support all this stuff as a DevOps engineer as well. So supporting application is another common requirement that you will see in a DevOps roles and responsibilities as part of the job description. Because as a DevOps engineer or an SRE engineer, uh, you are going to support an application if there are any issues in the application and then help them to debug that and help them to find the right alerts or what, what went wrong with the application and automate certain things as part of the support. And this is a most common thing uh, and that's why you have to be very good with Linux as well here. Let's say an application is taking a lot of memory and how would you debug that? And more often these questions are asked in your DevOps interviews as well. So that's the end of high level DevOps responsibilities or tasks that you might perform or that are expected from you as a DevOps engineer. But if you want me to dive into one specific area, for example, CI and going into the tasks of that area. I'll be happy to do that. But for that, obviously, you should let me know in the comment section and also based on the response of this video. But thank you again for watching this video. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, do click on subscribe and give it a like and share it with all your DevOps friends who are looking for DevOps roles and responsibilities. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.